A brand new study is offering hope to the millions of women who go through the uncomfortable symptoms of menopause. We are talking years of losing sleep at night, uncomfortable hot flashes, night sweats, everything that goes into the change. And it turns out from this study, help is on the way from perhaps an unlikely source, an and a controversial one, some might say. And so to talk all about this groundbreaking research, I'm so excited today to welcome Dr. Neil Barnard back to the exam room. Sir, thank you so very much for being here. Great to be here, Chuck. And this is really an exciting study, is it not? It really is. And just what you said is right. So many people have hot flashes that go on month after month, year after year, disrupting sleep. About 80% of women in North America have them. But I think we found a pretty good solution. I think so, too. And I will tell you that you're talking month after month. And during this series of podcasts that we're doing here on this wave study, uh, I've had an opportunity to speak with a number of the women who went through this study. And they said, well, look, you know, one participant in particular said it wasn't just months. You know, my mom went through it for year after year after year after year. And she thought that that, too, was going to be her fate. But no, no, as we will hear some very exciting results here. So let's start with what exactly is this study? Okay, uh, let me actually walk you through uh, my presentation, if you don't mind. I'd like sure. to show, show you some slides so that people understand the background, where the study came from, and what we found. Um, first of all, what hot flashes are, it's a phenomenon called vasodilation. The blood vessels in your skin dilate. They become wide, and they release heat into the skin very rapidly. It's just like somebody going over and opening up a radiator, the heat just comes right out. And they can happen at night and disrupt sleep. But researchers looked at Japan back in the 1980s and found something interesting. Women weren't having hot flashes very much. Uh, maybe 15% of women had them. And if they had them, they were really pretty mild. And the same was true in China. Researchers looked at China in the 1990s and found they didn't have much hot flashes either. And so people keyed in on What's going on in China? What's going on in Japan? What do they eat? Tofu, uh, soybean products, uh, miso soup, that kind of thing. And soybeans have natural compounds called isoflavones. And th this will not be on the test, but uh, these are the isoflavones that are natural compounds in soy, and they can treat hot flashes at least, at least a little bit. Not necessarily super powerful, but they're there. However, the story gets a whole lot more complicated. Uh, the diet changed in Japan. McDonald's arrived and Burger King and everybody else. And the rice-based diet turned into a diet with burgers and cheese. And hot flashes went up to more than 40% of women by about the year 2000. So what was going on? Big increase in animal products. More fish, more meat, more dairy, especially more dairy. And what went down was rice and other grains and potatoes. So a plant-based diet was giving away to a meaty kind of diet. So that was really a problem. But when researchers looked beyond Japan, beyond China, and looked even in Mexico, they found something interesting. Researchers in Mexico, uh, in a town called Valladolid, you fly down to Cancun, get in your car, drive two hours west, there's a town called Valladolid and another one called Chichimila. And there are many Mayan women there. And they didn't report hot flashes at all. I mean, zero. So what's their diet? Rice? No, their grain is corn. Soybeans? Mm -mm. Their bean is black beans. Uh, they eat a lot of a vegetable called a plant called La Chaya and many other vegetables, at least historically. Um, as you know, things are changing a lot around the world. And and that's true in rural Mexico too. But what we think is that the soybeans were part of the story in Japan and China, but the plant-based, generally speaking, plant-based diet um, was relevant there and also relevant um, in, uh, in Mexico. Okay, but the plot thickens. Um, here's why the overall diet might matter along with soy. They, they might actually work together. Um, I've got a chemical structure here called daidzine. That's one of the isoflavones. The name doesn't matter, but here's what matters. You've got gut bacteria. 
the day gene goes through the gut bacteria, they change it into another compound called Equal that is like supercharged medicine, natural medicine against hot flashes. So what we think is happening, soybeans help, but the overall diet gives you a healthy gut microbiome that can turn whatever's in the soybeans into something that really is going to work a lot. Okay. So anyway, what happened then, Chuck, was in last year, as you know, I wrote a book called Your Body in Balance. And I was going around giving talks about, uh, about this book. And a reader, and, and including the things that we're talking about now, about how to tackle menopause and the importance of soy and plant-based diet, a reader named Betty McEwen contacted me. And she said, I tried your approach. And my hot flashes were gone in five days. And, and so I, thought, I, I spoke to her on the phone. I said, five days. I, I didn't promise they'd be gone that, quite that fast. She said, no, it's true. It might even been three days. I said, okay, I'm glad for your result, but tell me exactly what you did. She said, well, I read your book, but I put it to, into practice in a specific way. And she said it was vegan, no animal products, kept fat really low, but she used whole soybeans. It wasn't say necessarily tofu or soy milk. She said, I got whole soybeans. In fact, she went onto Amazon and she bought Laura brand non-GMO soybeans. And then she got an instant pot and she cooked up the soybeans and had a half a cup per day. So I'm, I'm on the phone with her. I'm writing all this down. And I think this might've surprised her. I then did a randomized clinical trial of her interpretation of this method. So Betty, wherever you are, thank you for suggesting this. Um, and the study was called the Women's Study for the Alleviation of Vasomotor Symptoms or Waves. And this is uh, what you were just describing, Chuck. This just came out. Um, postmenopausal women began the diet or they were in a control group that got no change. And it was 12 weeks. The diet intervention was half a cup of soybeans, cooked soybeans every day, totally vegan, no animal products, minimizing oils. And a vegan diet is a vegan diet. Um, fruits, grains, beans, vegetables. Everyone got B12 because you need B12. And we asked them to track their hot flashes using an app on their phone, um, which is called My Luna. And it tracks the frequency, intensity, duration of your hot flashes. You just push a button when it happens. And everyone got a digital scale. You know, keep in mind, we did this in the pandemic. So we had to work remotely with everyone and it was all high tech and digital. Um, everyone got an instant pot and to bulk, uh, bulk what, am I, what am I trying to say, batch cook their soybeans. And the results were striking. First of all, looking at weight, the control group actually gained a little weight. But the group that did the vegan diet, they lost about not quite eight pounds, 3.5 kilograms. And then when you looked at what happened to the really troubling hot flashes, they improved a little bit in the control group. But in the group doing the diet, they dropped from about five a day to less than one a day. That's an 84% drop. And the number of women who were completely free of hot flashes, at the beginning of the study, they all had hot flashes. By 12 weeks, uh, only 41% had any moderate to severe hot flashes at all in the intervention group. In the control group, no change. So let me un unshare, uh, so I can come back and, and just say that the, the take home message here is that there's a combination of things. Soybeans are good, but if you just take a soy extract, that doesn't, that, that's not enough. Um, the combination of the soybeans, the overall healthy diet, getting the fat out, getting the animal products, out, that combination is what really knocked it out of the park. So let's uh, talk about this study. Very exciting results. Um, clarify for us again what the difference was between the control group and the intervention group. W was it just the, the soy? Um, n well, no, the control group was supposed to not change their diet. Some of them um, might have <laughs> changed their diet, uh, but in, in theory, um, they were not supposed to. They were supposed to follow whatever diet they were on before, not do soybeans or anything. Um, however, I think you're touching on something. Um, all of the women in both groups wanted to go vegan. They wanted to get rid of their hot flashes. So even though we asked the control group not to change their diet, um, to keep the groups the same, we sent them all an instant pot. 
We sent them all B12. Um, we sent them all a digital scale so they could kind of track their weight. And some of them might have started the diet change a little bit early, um, which might have accounted for why they were doing a little bit better um, than they had been before. But the, the diet group itself had this massive change where um, so many of them just said, my hot flashes have just left me alone. Finally, I can sleep through the night. They felt so much better. Well, let me ask you, you got that, that phone call from Betty McEwen and you decide to do this study. Um, what was your hypothesis going into this? I mean, you, you're talking about an 84% reduction here. I mean, that is remarkable. Even in your wildest of hypotheses, could you expect that type of result? You just really can't tell. And you, you really have to be honest with this. And, and so she said she had this dramatic result that was very, very rapid. And so uh, I got off the phone. I actually ran into Dr. Kaliova's office. I said, I think we need to plan a study here. We need to put this to the test. And, and, and that's, that's for an important reason. For, for those of you watching this program, you know that many women have menopausal symptoms. And what happens when you go see your doctor? Let me give you a prescription for hormones. And then the discussion is, don't these cause cancer over the long run? And, and aren't they associated? And, and all of these issues come up. If you can do it through diet, those risks are taken off the table. So that was your thinking going in. I'm, I'm, I have had the opportunity, as I said, to speak with a number of the women who participated in this study, but I'm wondering what are some of the things, the feelings that they expressed to you and your research team heading into this? Were they really expecting, uh, again, this type of dramatic result? No, I, I, well, they were hopeful but we didn't know. And prior studies have suggested that just going, just having soybeans alone, it doesn't do a lot. It does, it does some, but it's not huge. And a vegan diet alone is helpful, but it doesn't get you all the way there for a lot of people. This combination seemed to be what really did it. Um, but Chuck, I want to tell you something that um, we started lots of research studies around here. And when it begins, the participants are sort of like kids at the swimming pool in June. You know, they, they're sticking their toe in the water thinking, <laughs> I wonder if I want to jump in or not. You know, th they want to go vegan. They want to do this, but they're nervous about it. But once they jump in, they discover the water's fine. And let me ask you about uh, what we saw with the health trends over in Japan. Um, the introduction of, of with the standard American diet, you know, more meat, more fat, uh, specific to fat, how big of a role do you think that is playing in terms of the severity of menopause that a woman might experience? I think it's um, the amount of fat, but also the type of fat. If you look at say cheese fat, um, I mean, that's what's coming in, cheese and meat. You get not only more fat, but you get particularly the saturated fat. And that seems to be worse than other kinds of fat. Uh, that said, if a woman has hot flashes and she's trying to knock them out, I would not only avoid animal products, but I would really keep all the fats really low. The animal fat for sure, but I would keep the other fats low too. All right. So we, we hear about the 84% number and that's a reduction for everyone who participated. But I'm curious if there was one participant maybe who really stood out to you, right? So this was being done in the middle of the pandemic. And what we know is that during the pandemic, people have been packing on pounds like it's almost hard to imagine the rate at which some people are gaining weight. And that to me means that there are a lot of people who are making extra trips to the drive through maybe eating extra bags of potato chips. And I'm wondering if there was one participant who really saw such a a, a more dramatic change than perhaps anybody else because of the diet that they were eating? Um, to, to tell you the truth, virtually almost everybody had changes that, that, that came in really quickly. Um, it was quite unusual to see a person who didn't get a response from the diet. But there is one person who um, really jumped out at me. Uh, well, frankly, many did, but let me just mention one. Um, and the reason she jumped out at me is she made the diet change. She got tremendous benefit. Um, her hot flashes were, were greatly reduced, but we get together every week and we talk by zoom. How are you doing? Whatever. And she said, I want to bring my husband into this. I said, really? Um, her husband had diabetes and had other health issues. And she, and the whole idea was, this isn't just for me. This might help 
my spouse, my kids, uh, other people. And that's what really, I, I have to say, I find really impressive. And, 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 and if, if you're watching this program, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if I give you a prescription for metformin for diabetes or lisinopril for your blood pressure, whatever it is, that'll affect you. It won't affect anybody that you live with or, or, or your community. But if, if on the other hand, the treatment is a healthier breakfast or a healthier, healthier diet in general, that rubs off on everybody and everyone gets into the discussion and other people can put that to work. And you're also breaking the chain between our generation and the next generation that inherits our diet um, patterns. So I guess what I'm getting at is, is that she taught me this, I think, important lesson that a food treatment goes to the cause of the issue and allows other people to, to jump in whom we may never actually see in our clinic. And uh, as we wrap up here, this first episode of a three-part series on this just extraordinary study, I'm curious, what has the reception been thus far among your colleagues in the medical community? Um, I have to say, I thought people would um, be concerned about it because, it, frankly, it's a big, it's a bit of a threat to the hormone industry. That is not the response we've encountered. The response has been cheers um, because finally we've got something that we're proud to share with our patients. So I've been really, really happy um, with th that doctors are saying, how, how can I do this? How to tell me the steps, you know, how, how, how do I walk a person through it? What if they have questions? Um, the doctors who are, the doctors who are prescribing hormones really don't want to be doing that. And the women who say, don't give me something safer. Um, they need an answer. And I think finally we've got it. And the fact that soy is such an instrumental or plays such an instrumental role in this study, I imagine for a lot of your colleagues as well, that's that's quite the head scratcher, because as we'll talk about in the second episode, soy is still this ultra controversial food. Um, it has been. Um, it shouldn't be because the science on it is really pretty clear. Uh, but unfortunately, in the Internet world, uh, myths persist and they they've been pervasive including in the medical community so i'm hoping we can set those aside all right well in the next episode dr barnard you and i are going to get into separating soy fact from soy fiction truth and lies all about soy so uh we are off and running on this three-part series if you have not already done so please go ahead and like this channel subscribe to it and leave a nice comment below or Get the audio version. Head over to Apple Podcast or Spotify. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well. And we are going to tell you everything that you could possibly want to know about this exciting, groundbreaking, and potentially even life-changing study. So, Dr. Barnard, thank you so very much for joining us today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Jack. If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.